Hello my dear students, uh, let us discuss about one more type of field test that is static cone penetration test. You can see here this is a cone penetrometer uh, with the 60 degree apex angle and diameter is about 36 mm or uh, it is uh, changing from 36 mm to 44 mm okay so here this is a pore water and the friction is developed in the upward direction this is an inclinometer okay so qf is the corrected tip stress that is equal to qc plus 1 minus a into ub okay ub is nothing but pore water pressure and qc is measure tip stress Okay, uh, now uh, here you can see this is a continuous hydraulic push at 20 mm per second at a rod every 1 meter. Cone rod, this is of 36 mm diameter, readings taken every 10 to 50 mm. Okay, uh, this is FS, uh, sleeve friction, UB is pore water pressure and QC is measured tip stress or cone resistance. At field, uh, static cone penetration test is widely used of recording variation in the in-situ penetration resistance of soil in cases where in-situ density is disturbed by boring method and SPT is unreliable below water table. The test is very useful for soft case, soft sills, medium sands and fine sands. How to carry out this uh, test? Uh, by this test, basically by pushing the standard cone at the rate of 10 to 20 mm per second into the soil and noting the friction. The strength is determined. After installing, installing the equipment as per IS4968 part 3, the sounding rod is pushed into the soil and the driving is operated at the steady rate of 10 mm per second approximately so as to advance the cone only by external loading to the depth which a cone assembly available. For finding combined cone friction resistance, the shearing strength of the soil QS and tip resistance QC is noted in gauge and added to get the total strength. There are some limitations of this test. The first limitation is this test is unstable for gravelly soil and soil for having SPT N value greater than 50. Also in dense sand, uh, anchorage becomes too uh, cumbersome and expensive and for such cases dynamic SPT can be used. This test is also unsuitable for field operation since uh, erroneous value obtained due to the presence of brick bats or loose stones etc. There are some advantages of this test. Uh, the first one is continuous resistance with depth is recorded. Static resistance is more appropriate to determine static properties of soil can be correlated with most properties of soil. Disadvantages are not very popular in India. If a small rock piece is encountered, resistance shown is erratic and incorrect, involves handling heavy equipment. And uh, there is a correlation uh, in SCPT test that is Cn is equal to m plus nm1 into 10 kN per meter square. Here m is mass of a cone approximately 1.1 kg. m1 is mass of each sounding rods 1.5 kg. n is number of rods used. Friction ratio can be calculated using this formula Fr that is equal to Q is divided by QC into 100 where FR is friction ratio, QS is measured site or slip friction, QC is tip resistance or point resistance. The sensitivity of soil can be measured using this formula ST is equal to 10 divided by FR into FR in parts in percentage. ST is sensitivity of soil. Okay, for cohesive soil, undried shear strength can be calculated using this formula SU is equal to QC minus P0 divided by NK, where P0 is overburden pressure that is gamma into D or Z, NK 
K is cone factor is usually 15 to 20 depends on the plasticity index of soil. Okay, so uh, this is from other uh, scientists. For that, it is given QC is equal to 612.6 plus 587.5 IC, where IC is consistency index of soil and QC is uh, measured in KPA. So, if you have consistency index, you can calculate QC. That is uh, given by uh, uh, the scientists named Sarvak and Opovic. So, uh, this this is about a static cone penetration test. Let us now discuss about dynamic cone penetration test that is DCPT. You can see here this is a test setup pulley for hand holding swivel and portable tripod, guide rod, water uh, swivel and rope for hammer, rope for holding swivel, driving head, hammer, flexible tube okay this is silting tank and supply tank driving rod vane boiler and cone the aim is to determine the effort required to force a point through the soil and so obtain resistance value which correspond to the mechanical properties of the soil the preliminary use is in cohesion less soils when static penetration test is difficult to perform or dynamic properties of the soil are of special interest. How we can conduct or, or do this test? Uh, the test setup shown in the figure. The standard cone is connected to the drilling rod. The driving head with the guide rod is connected and properly fixed on the top of the drilled rods. This complete assembly is kept in position with the cone resisting vertically, resting vertically on the ground where the test is to be carried out. For the circulation of the bentonite slurry the pumping unit of the bentonite slurry is properly connected to the guide drawn through flexible tube the cone is driven into the soil by blows of 65 kg hammer falling from a height of 750 mm the blow count for every 30 centimeter penetration is made to get a continuous record of the variation of the soil consistency with depth. The sufficient circulation of the bentonite slurry is necessary for elimination of the friction on the rocks. Sometimes the bentonite slurry is not used when the investigation is required up to a depth of 6 meter only. So, uh, these are the uh, some of the steps to carry out a dynamic cone penetration test. The advantages of this test are the test does not need a borehole. It can be done quickly to cover a la large area economically. The test helps to identify variability of subsoil profile and to locate soft pockets such as filled up ponds. When DCPT is carried out close to a few boreholes, suitable Corrections may be obtained for a particular site and the number of boreholes can be reduced. Disadvantages are the test is normally not suitable for cohesive soils or very loose cohesion-less soils. It is normally not possible to evaluate the mechanical properties of the soil at great depths when the friction along the um, extension rod is significant. So, uh, this is about uh, uh, standard, uh, I mean, uh, dynamic cone penetration test. Here, a detailed study is not required. Uh, you will be studying a detail in higher semester, but you should know what is uh, pen standard penetration test, what is static cone penetration test, and what is dynamic cone penetration test, and what are the advantages, disadvantages, and how it can be carried out in the field. I hope all of you understood. Now, let us discuss about uh, some of the few points that is a presumptive safe bearing capacity. It is the bearing capacity that can be pre-assumed in the absence of data based on visual identification at the site. Sometimes what happened, we don't get the data. So in such a cases, the National Building Code of India in 1983 lists the value of presumptive SBC 
in kp a for different soils as presented in the table so these are the some of the standard safe bearing capacity value if uh, it is not possible to get the uh, spc at the site we can use these values as a reference suppose for the rocks the rocks without lamination and defects for example granite trap and uh, diorite can use safe bearing capacity as 3240 similarly for laminated rocks for example sandstone and limestone in sound condition 1620 residual deposits of shattered and broken bedrock and hard shell cemented material that is 880 then for the soft rock the spc is 440 similarly for the coarser less soils like gravel sand gravel sand and gravel compact and offering resistance to penetration and excavated by tools uh, then you can take uh, spc as 440 similarly for coarse sand compact and dry 440 40 medium sand compact and dry sand it is 245 then fine sand silt it is 150 loose gravel or sand gravel mixture like loose coarse to medium sand 245 fine sand loose and dry it is 100 similarly for cohesive soils like a soft shale hard or stiff clay in deep bed dry then 440 then medium clay readily intended with a thumbnail 245 moist clay and sand clay mixture 150 soft clay intended with moderate thumb pressure 100 very soft clay which can be penetrated several cm with the thumb that is 50 then black cotton soils or other uh, shrinkable or expansive clay in dry condition that is 130 to 160 these are the some of the guidelines of to take the bearing capacity if there is uh, no data is available okay and also you should note this two things the safe bearing capacity may be increased by an amount equal to the weight of the material removed from the above the bearing level that is the base of the foundation for cohesion less soil the safe bearing capacity shall be reduced by 50% if the water table is above or near the bearing surface of the soil if the water table is below the bearing surface of the soil at a distance at least equal to the width of the foundation no such reduction shall apply for intermediate depth of the water table proportional reduction of the safe bearing capacity may be made these are the some of the uh, notes uh, you have to remember okay next uh, the last topic is bore hole log a bore hole log is a record of information obtained from in situ tests and summary of laboratory test on samples for a particular bore hole it includes a description or classification of various soils or rock types at different depths with summary of essential properties including presence or otherwise of ground water table a typical bore hole log is illustrated in figure you can see here the uh, bore hole log looks like this okay uh, it is like you have to give the uh, test report in this manner the job number project and uh, which date and what is where is the location boring method which method is used for boring then what is the diameter of the boring mm, method used and what is the ground level water table level supervisor name everything okay so you can see here soil type yellowish which type of soil greenish uh, like that this is one uh, one uh, uh, example okay uh, here you can see the values so d and u and all you can see here d u d w d d u d d is disturbed sample u is undisturbed sample w is water sample n is spt value okay this is a typical bore hole log the boring log is the basic record of almost every geotechnical exploration and provides a detailed record of the work performed and the findings of the investigation the field log should be written or printed uh, legibly uh, and should be kept as clean as it practical all appropriate portions of the logs should be completed in the field prior to the completion of the field exploration 
a wide variety of drilling forms are used by various agencies. The specific forms to be used for a given type of boring will depend on local practice. A boring log is a description of exploration procedures and subsurface conditions encountered during drilling sampling and coring following is a brief list of items which should be included in the logs uh, these items are discussed in detail in subsequent <coughs> sections uh, topographic survey data including boring location and surface elevation and benchmark location and datum if available an accurate record of any deviation in the planned boring locations identification of the subsoils and bedrock including density consistency color moisture structure geological origin <clears throat> the depths of the various generalized soil and rock strata encountered. Sampler type, depth, penetration and recovery. Sampling resistance in terms of hydraulic pressure or blows per depth of sampler penetration. Size and type of hammer, height of drop, soil sampling interval and recovery. Rock core run numbers, depths and lengths, core recovery and rock quality resignation. Type of drilling operation used to advance and stabilize the hole. Com compare to resistance to drilling. Loss of drilling fluid. Water level observations with remarks on possible variations due to tides and river levels so all this data has to be um, collected and uh, uh, placed in one place that is called as uh, borehole log data okay i hope all of you understood uh, this chapter thank you